Believe it or not, Berserker is still actually a very, very good class. I know Berserker was nerfed a few years back, so he's not as tanky as he used to be. I'll see a lot of people who just kind of go in there, start swinging, and they have no idea what <laughs> they have no idea what they're doing. First off, I'm going to go over all of the skills you should be using, the starter weapons, all of the weapons. I'm going to go over how to parry and block with them. You don't really need to block too much, mo mostly just parrying. I'm going to go over how to deal with every big Z and Z type. Just kind of go over a few tips and advice you should be doing as a berserker. He's a melee class, so you really shouldn't be using, you know, doing anything long range for the most part. You can use a nail gun on him, that's pretty decent, but otherwise you're going to be mailing 99% of the time. So the skills that I would recommend using are Skirmisher, Vampire, Parry, Smash, and Spartan. Just to kind of go over why choose these, so Skirmisher, going to make you move faster, makes you regenerate one point of health, which is super useful for survivability can run away from things and actually live. Dreadnought is good if you have a medic, but once you kind of get low on health, you're kind of stuck with that low health. There's no way to get that health back or regenerate from that. So this, this will be good if you have a medic and you're on like a very tiny map, but overall I think Skirmisher is going to be a lot more useful. Vampire, this is going to give you three points of health for every single kill. So think of it like doom. Every time you kill something, you're gonna get your health back. You're gonna constantly want to kill Zeds to keep your health afloat. Cause if you don't if you don't kill anything, you're just gonna keep losing health over time. The one point of health can help, but you, you're gonna wanna kill smaller Zeds to your, keep your HP up. Attack 20% faster and 20% more damage isn't really necessary. You don't really, you're not really meant to do damage as Berserker, I mean you can, but your your main objective as Berserker is to just tank hits, and you just want the best survivability as possible, and that's what the options that I chose here. So parrying, you're going to want to constantly parry, every 8 seconds you're going to want to parry, it gives you a huge damage reduction, and it increases your damage and attack speed. Resistance isn't really worth it, because this, look, this is only 15%, resistance to all damage then if you stack this will be 30 percent but this is already 30 percent reduction in damage as long as you have that parry buff on you and extra damage as well so yeah this is just a no-brainer smash this is you're going to want to be right clicking instead of left clicking this can do a lot more damage i would only take massacre if you're going for like a katana build which can be good for trash, but Smash is just so much more useful and all around it's going to be a lot better. Spartan, this is going to make you move in real time. Berserker Rage is not useful with Skirmisher. If you're using Dreadnought, I would recommend taking Berserker Rage. Again, you, you want more survivability. You're going to want to be able to move fast and regenerate as much as you can and parry as much as you can. These other skills here are more of just pure, like if you don't, parry or you don't know how to play the class and you just want to you know like camp a doorway or something then i guess this this other skills here can work but yeah these are the skills that you want to be taking so the starter weapons you will spawn in with this shovel shovel <laughs> this is actually a pretty decent starting weapon it's not amazing but it's going to get the job done for the first wave or two i would recommend after the first wave is upgrading this once this will make it so when you do your power attack on like the head hits I should have mentioned this earlier but you're going to want to be getting head hits a lot of people think oh you just go in there and start swinging but no this is also a perk like every perk in the game you're going to want to get headshots head hits so you can actually do the most possible damage because otherwise you're your smash ability isn't going to do as much damage as you want and you're not going to be able to one hit things which means you're gonna get hit a lot more and you're not gonna be able to get that easy health every single time that three points of health so yeah upgrade the crovel after wave one then i would keep the crovel for at least wave two three maybe four eventually you want to get rid of this and go right for the bone crusher this is what i would recommend this is the meta weapon for berserker i'm gonna get this right out of the way so the the meta weapons for berserker is bone crusher and the Vlad 1000 nail gun. So this is gonna be powerhouse. This has the best damage reduction when you parry, and this has a very good swing, easy thing to swing, very good hitboxes on it. Eventually, once you get both of these weapons here, I would recommend upgrading this, the nail gun once, and the bone crusher once, and you have your max carry weight here. So this is the matter build here. 
This is what I use 99% of the time. I'm gonna go over every single weapon just because. That said, I just wanna be upfront here. I have very, I don't have that much experience with a lot of these weapons here because I don't really experiment much with Berserker. I think a lot of his other melee weapons are not that good. They can work, but being able to parry Husk's flame, flame attack, which you can actually do that, which is amazing. And just how useful the damage reduction is on this the bone crusher just objectively is going to be the best melee weapon you can choose so i already talked about this the vlad 1000 nail gun this is good for husks and edars it's good range weapon definitely recommend it usually you don't need until like the later waves you usually the travel upgrade at once will get you through the first three or four waves katana this is something i would avoid unless you're going for the massacre perk which you can kind of just spam left click on it and kind of stun them you constantly keep hitting them fire axe i think is awful i would never recommend this it's way too slow it does have this cool ability where you can like stun zeds with it that's kind of a low chance and overall i don't think it's useful at all it's not worth using the hemo clobber this is a decent weapon it's only really good for healing so you kind of heal your teammates if you don't have a medic but you're probably better off so just getting an hm tech 101 for side heal there's only one carry weight but it's an option bone crusher is still going to be better so sometimes instead of taking the, the the nail gun you can take the bone crusher and the hemo clobber for heals the zwy hander is this used to be one of my favorite melee weapons for berserker you can only get this if you have i think chivalry one which is kind of an old game now. The second one's already out. It's a decent weapon, but it's not that much more for a bone crusher. So usually I just wait and save up for it. Pulverizer, this is okay for flesh pounds because its right attack is this explosive attack, which is flesh pounds are weak to explosives a lot more than other Zeds. So it's a well, it's an A weapon, but it's not it's not really worth using. The Tesla Launcher, I have very little experience with this weapon. From what I've used of it, it's not very good, and you're not really meant for range attacks anyways, and the, the ammo pool, I remember not being that great on it. Then we have the first DLC weapon here, but second DLC weapon for Berserker, the Blood Sickle. It's okay, it can be good in the right hands, but it's, its hitboxes is very janky. You gotta kind of like swing it to the side so it can actually hit things in the head but it's just way too janky and kind of annoying to use so i wouldn't recommend using it unless you just it looks really cool but that's really all it has going for it the static strikers these are supposedly decent weapons i've seen people use them and do very well with them because they can stun zeds with his right attack i never really use it too much so i can't really comment on it i can just say that it's it's supposedly a decent berserker weapon the eviscerator this used to be good at, during the early access days but now it's not that great why is my gun out i don't know what's going on here so yeah the eviscerator it can be okay for boss waves if you need some kind of long range thing you just want to spam with like in solo i think you're better off getting one of the other long range weapons like the the nail gun or the prana pistols bone crusher i already went over this the best melee weapon for berserker that i use 99 percent of the time the ion thruster is probably the second best weapon for berserker it's a DLC weapon, very, very good. It's a lot faster swing speed, so it's a lot more spammy. It's a lot better for trash than the Bone Crusher, but it's not as good for big Zeds. And also has this cool ability. We can do this like giant sweep of everything. It builds up, builds up heat, and then you can kind of release all the heat at once which is good if you get like stuck or you want to knock down a scrape. The battle axe, I have very little experience with this, so I can't really comment on it. It's just okay. The swing speed's kind of slow. It's not for me. The dual prana pistols are decent. I still think the nail guns are better, but this is a solid choice. I would, I would recommend using them, but they're not the best weapons. Frostfang is okay. It's more for support. On Berserker, it's just okay. Then we got these new guns here. So I'm actually on the beta right now. By the time I release this video, the update could actually already be out but these are just the replacements hrg variant of the nine millimeter pistols and yeah you don't really want these you don't need two of them the dashing gun you don't need this this is stupid so i'm gonna do some real-time gameplay here i'm gonna spawn in a bunch of zeds here let me spawn in some clots corfas and riders Oop, already on me so make sure you're constantly pairing the hits when you parry them you'll see this green little hitbox on you or hitbox on there and then your screen will get kind of vibrant and when you parry a zed you'll notice that they'll kind of stumble backwards which gives you some breathing room 
So make sure you're constantly parrying their hits. Go for the head hits. So for the swing trajectory of your Crovel here, there's the forward attack, the W power attack. There's the A and D power attacks, which are these giant like side sweeping moves. You want to use this when there's more than one enemy in front of you. So like if there's a bunch of clots or Gorefast in front of you, then you want to make sure you're doing these giant side sweeping moves. And the backwards power attack, the S power attack, that's not all, that's not very useful because you know, you're not going to be able to get head hits this way. You want to get in the habit of being able to do these forward power attacks and still be able to walk backwards. Easiest way to really do that is jump backwards and then swap from S to W. Running backwards, you're jumping, then you swap to W and then keep doing these forward power attacks. So this is especially useful when you're dealing with flesh pounds or scrakes. Just know for forward power attacks, this is going to be for single target enemies. If there's just one enemy in front of you, then use this. If there's multiple enemies in front of you, then you want to be doing these side sweeping power attacks. So yeah, it, it's pretty easy to take care of most things as Berserker. Sirens might be a little tricky because there's not much you can really do. You just got to kill them as fast as possible and make sure you maintain your distance. Um, you can actually parry them too. So for the crawlers here, parrying them is a little tricky. Sometimes they'll be like right in front of you and they're you don't really know when to parry, but you can still parry them. So for these husks, there's nothing you can really do about those fireballs. And for the flame attack, there's nothing you can really do with the crovel either. So you just want to go in there and kill them as fast as possible. So usually for husk, if you just have your crovel or for bloats, you want to throw your EMP grenade, then go in for the kill. If I would just go up there without parrying, this is how much damage they would do on me. See, I'm going, I'm losing health like crazy right now. Thankfully, I have the demigod thing on, so I'm not actually dying. And let me show you what that's like again when I actually parry their hits, parry their flame attack. So now I'm going to actually parry the flame attack, and you'll see how little damage I take. I mean, the armor does a lot of it, but usually you won't have armor. Armor is usually the last thing you end up buying. So yeah, just make sure you're parrying the, the flame attack. For the bone crusher, you want to aim a little bit to the left of their head. And if there's multiple Zeds, you want to make sure you're doing these side sweeping moves. Usually for, for the Bone Crusher, his side, his A power attack is going to be his most useful power attack. That's what you want to use for hordes. You never want to use this backwards power attack really. And if there's just a single target or for bosses, you want to do these forward power attacks. You want to be doing these A power attacks, these left power attacks for the hordes. You can see how much damage it does, it's super useful. There's just one target, then you can do the forward power attack. Let me show you what that's like again. There's a bunch in front of you. Make sure you're doing the doing these giant A power attacks here. Very, very useful. Even for these guys like here, you can just aim for the head. It's super easy. And really, you don't really need the bone crusher until like wave five or six. Usually the, the crawl will get you through. Even a good berserker should be able to deal with every type of Zed with no issue for the most part, with just a Crovel, which I know sounds kind of insane, but as long as you're pairing the Big Zed's hits, you should not be able to die for the most part. You should be the last person to be alive. Let me show you what the nail gun here is like. You want to be using this, again, for Edars, Husks, Sirens. You can also use this as like a last resort weapon. So like if you're running away and you have like five HP, then you may as well just start spamming this because you don't want to be anywhere near Zed's. Mostly you're going to be using this for Zed time. So we got two Flesh Pounds here. Aim for the head. There's one Flesh Pound down. And there's two Flesh Pounds down. You can take care of like two Flesh Pounds or two to three Scrakes during that time. Let me show you what that's like with the Scrake. There's one down and the other. And you could probably take care of one more, but yeah, so when there's that time, I would swap out to the nail gun and try and take care of the big Zeds if you can. If there's already a big Zed killer on your team, then you can help contribute with them, or you can just let them, let the gunslinger sharpshooter take care of them. Um, if there's like a sharpshooter or a gunslinger behind you, sometimes you just want to make sure you're crouching, especially for a big Zed. Now I'm going to go over how to deal with the big Zeds here, so... Okay, so then we got the quarter pounders here. 
aim for the head. Usually you want to aim a little bit to the left when you use the Bone Crusher. So you can usually get a, a hit in. Oh, that was quick. Say if this guy is Rage here. But now he's Rage. I can get hit in and then I can parry right after. It means he stumbles. Quarter pounders was usually stumble, but so I get a hit in and then I can parry right after I, I hit him. So yeah, quarter pounders are super easy to take care of. Scrakes are going to be your biggest challenge. I'm gonna save that for last. So flesh pounds are really not that difficult. You can get a hit in and parry. Get a hit in. You can get a huge a few hit in, a few hits in. Parry. Swing and parry. You spam parry when he does that like chain attack. Then for the scrakes, these are going to be the most challenging to deal with. Just because they, once you attack them, they, they don't stop being raged. So that's going to be an issue. You don't really have breathing room with this scrake. You kind of just want to... Be up close to him. That was pretty fast. Really, it's just knowing the the attack patterns for the scrakes. You want to be swinging right after you parry, because when you parry him, he's gonna get stumbled back for like half a second to a second. One more time, just to show you what that's like. So yeah, that's how you take care of the big zeds. And then for the bosses here, this is something I've always kind of struggled with 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 Berserker. For Hans, Berserker is just okay. Usually I would swap to a different perk for Hans. For the Patriarch, he's probably the easiest boss to take care of as Berserker. You can just kind of parry most of his hits and he, when, he, when he does his minigun attack, you just, you know, you be in um, breathing distance of him and his minigun won't actually affect you. You just want to make sure that you're running away when he does his missile attack. King Flesh Pound is just okay for, for a Berserker. You can parry most of his hits. But like when he does his rage attack, his ground attack, that can be kind of an issue. So just make sure you're running away when he does that. For the Abomination, you definitely don't want to be Berserker for the Abomination. You do not want to be anywhere near close to him. Usually for boss waves, if you don't know what you're going to get, I mean, usually I would just swap, but if you don't know what you're going to get, or if you do know that you're going to get the Abomination, then I would recommend just using the, the Nail Gun and the Prana Pistols. Those, those can be a good combo for bosses. And for the Matriarch, you really don't want to be Berserker for the Matriarch either. Just her laser attack is going to destroy you and there's nothing you can really do to avoid it. Another thing for bosses is you can swap out your perk here from Vampire to Butcher. For solo play, you can take care of bosses just fine. For multiplayer, I would just recommend swapping to a different perk. So yeah, I went over how to deal with all of the Zeds, how to properly parry them, know the attack patterns and how they move. But yeah, just some general advice to end this off with to kind of repeat what I've already said. So make sure you're constantly parrying the Zeds. Make sure you know the swing tra trajectories. Make sure that you're closely watching your HP and knowing when to actually bail out. Just, just make sure you're constantly on the move. You want to utilize your, your mobility and make sure you're constantly regenerating, regenerating your health. So yeah, that's everything you need to know for playing Berserker. Hopefully I didn't miss anything and hopefully you found some of this information useful.